stop for a second and realize I've never really done anything else. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I had, my family had the internet when it was the days of 28k modems, and the internet was a dollar an hour, um, and, and websites were grey with flashing GIFs. Um, and the good old days in the 90s where, um, you know, the internet was new and, and people weren't really doing affiliate marketing yet. And, um, I, I kind of started, I think I was even just 10 years old, and I was kind of writing HTML, getting into GeoCities and trying to figure out this whole thing. Um, so I got into it really early, and I'm, I'm there um, writing these little personal homepages, and I'm yeah, getting one hit a day, and it was kind of fun back then. And over the years, then I just kind of went with me. I started building what we call today a social website. Um, and um, this was kind of late, late 90s. And, um, realized um, like there were people coming to this site and I was like how how are they getting here through the search engine I think Google was just released uh, 98 and um, and realized that like you know if the keyword was on the page then then uh, they'd kind of get to the site when they were searching for it um, and, and I kind of thought of the old saying one glass of red wine a day is good imagine how good a whole bottle is um, so I thought one keyword is great imagine if I put a hundred keywords on this page um, so I good old 90s, spammed the page with keywords, and I started ranking for everything. And I'm like, this is amazing. Um, and that's kind of how I started. It was like this game of, could I beat the search engines? And don't spam your site with keywords, it doesn't work anymore. But, um, but back then, it was, it was the thing to do, and it was, um, you know, the dog pile, you could update your website, and an hour later, they would have scraped it again, you could see how the kind of changes were happening. Um, and going forward from that, over the years, I kind of just started writing all these um, kind of tools and stuff to make a lot of my um, kind of SEO tasks easier. Because my background kind of became software engineering. And um, when Google Chrome got released, um, I was like, you know, there's nothing in, there was no extensions and stuff. And we'd all use Firefox. Everyone was complaining, oh, there's no SEO book uh, toolbar and there's no SEO quake thing. And, and when Google finally announced that they were going to have these extensions, I was like, hey, I could write something for this, and, and just wanted it for my own uses. Um, so I wrote this uh, thing called Chrome SEO, we named it, and um, it turned out that uh, 100,000 other people wanted it too. Um, and we ended up with 100,000 people downloading it with the most downloaded, seventh most downloaded extension or something ridiculous in the Chrome store. Uh, and it kind of just went from there. Um, so so you, you might have seen the tool. Um, uh, Google ended up telling us we had to change our name because they didn't like that we stole the logo and twisted it and, and used the word Chrome. Um, and one of the things in the tool that we wrote from the, the start was just a quick thing that I'd kind of thrown together, which was a, a keyword kind of research thing. And it was really basic, but it, um, it did something that no one else was doing. And it, it was great because you could enter a few keywords and, um, and you could get thousands of kind of keyword suggestions back. <coughs> Um, and it was great being able to go through these list of keywords and kind of choosing the, the ones that we wanted. And I'll show you how we ended up doing that and, and how you can manually do it and what we've got today. Um, so what is keyword research? Um, I mean, the whole premise of keyword research is uh, to find keywords that we can rank in the search engines that get visitors to our site to complete our goal. And it's our goal bit that's really important. If you've got a site online, you've really got to decide what is the goal of your website. Because we can get any old keyword hitting your site, but if the thing isn't converting, it's really just wasting your server's resources. Um, and that really means analytics. Um, most of us use Google Analytics. One of the problems with Google Analytics now is um, there's, there's an opt-out thing, so anyone can actually opt-out of being tracked by Google Analytics. So your Google Analytics are less, uh, less accurate. Um, there's talk of that being integrated into browsers, so someone can opt out in their browser across all sites. Um, they can currently opt out across their browser, but it's, it's harder, but actually integrating into the browser itself. So you know, the, the chance of, of people starting to do this is, is increasing. Um, there's other issues with Google Analytics. If you've got big sites, they'll only um, do up to 10 million hits a month if you go over that, or over a million or two million hits a day, and they'll stop. But, they might keep tracking your site. So if you've got, got kind of big sites, that can be a problem. Um, but there are open source uh, alternatives if you do want to start kind of uh, really tracking this stuff so you know what your keywords are doing. Um, PWiki, um, I don't know how to say that, is a popular one. Um, it's open source, it's free. Um, and the other one is Open Web Analytics um, over this side. And the cool thing about Open Web Analytics 
is it does click tracking and click heat maps. So you can actually see where visitors are clicking on the site, which is really cool. If you've got a big site, just watch the performance of that. I hear there's a few problems with it. Um, but before we get into keyword research, I thought that's important because it's really, if you can't track this stuff and you can't see if it's working, um, there's no point in kind of doing it. Um, heaps of analytics information out there at the moment, so have a bit of a Google if it's not something you're already doing. Um, another issue with, uh, with keywords is um, uh, Google released uh, Google Encrypted a while back. Um, and Google Encrypted was basically a SSL site, so it was an encrypted site that anyone could go to and their searches would be encrypted, which was great if you're on Wi-Fi like I was earlier and I wanted to go to an encrypted site because I was scared someone would steal my uh, login details and stuff like that. Um, you go to the encrypted site, your searches are safe. The problem was when you click on a search result, your keywords aren't displayed in the analytics of the person who receives that hit. So the website that you go to doesn't get the, the keywords. Um, but no one really cared because hardly anyone was using it and it wasn't too much an issue. Well, Google in the US have now made encrypted search the default for all logged in Google users. And that's going to be getting rolled out potentially across the world. Now, they're saying it's only single digit, and this is only last month this happened, but they're saying it's only single digit uh, numbers, percentages that it's currently affecting. But you think the amount Google is trying to push us to log into Google with Google Plus, with Gmail, with all these services. There's going to come a point where that's going to be 20 or 25 or 50 percent of users logged in, and you're not going to be getting those that keyword data in your analytics. So it's going to be very hard to track. Now, of course, if you're paying for AdWords, Google will give you that data. Um, and there is, if you go into, oh, if you go into your analytics, this is what you're going to see. You've probably already seen this before. Not provided means that the search result. Uh, the, the search query wasn't provided. Um, but if you log into Google uh, Webmaster Tools, um, if you haven't already got Google Webmaster Tools, go sign up for it. It's a free service. Um, basically, uh, gives you a lot of information about how Google crawls your site, and they'll contact you if there's any problems and stuff like that. Sign up for Google Webmaster Tools. Bing has one too. Does anyone know the name of Bing one? I always forget it. It's like Google, Bing Webmaster Central, I think. Have a quick Google. It's well worth signing up for. Um, the only issue with it is it only saves data for the last 30 days. You're only going to see your keywords hitting your site for the last 30 days, and you're only going to get uh, a thousand results that are in aggregate. So it's going to show you the, the amount of searches you've got. It's not going to list what page those searches go to. So this is an, an issue because in the past we've kind of bit by bit kind of optimized this stuff, and it's becoming harder to optimize for because we don't actually know how people are getting to our sites. Um, which kind of um, makes it all the more important. Um, so I thought let's start um, by, and that should be hidden, sorry about that. Um, I thought let's start by um, kind of determining what I call our base keywords. So when I start keyword researching, I, I have this set of keywords that I kind of start brainstorming, like I call my base keywords. Some people call them seed keywords. Um, but it's just I sit down and kind of start thinking about the brand or the product or the service, whatever the website's about, and just throw anything out there and write it down. Um, so, for example, um, I thought we'd start something like a shoe shop because it's, it's a good easy one. Um, so, obviously, for a, if you're selling, if it was an e-commerce site and you're selling shoes, you're going to start with something like shoe or plural shoes. You're probably not going to go shoe because most people want two. Um, <laughs> And from there you kind of branch it out. So kind of a demographic thing, men's shoes, ladies' shoes, kids' shoes. Um, we've got high heels, stilettos, slippers, um, which would be kind of uh, different types of shoes. And then you've got uh, your brands, you branch out kind of into your brand. And you just want to throw out all these keywords and really just start writing them down. Um, no particular goal right now, we're just getting down as many broad keywords as we can. And that's usually how I start by doing keyword research on a site-wide level. So I'm not talking about, um, if, if you were doing an individual page on your site, obviously you choose keywords specific to that, but I'm, I'm saying like a site-wide level if we're doing a site-wide kind of keyword research thing. Um, and this is a little bit hidden, but down at the bottom here, um, so after we've kind of um, got that list of keywords, I usually then throw them into um, uh, what I call uh, open search suggests. So I'll close this, and let's see, 
get in and do something a bit more practical. I might just grab a seat so I can kind of sit down. Um, so one of the cool things is uh, Google Suggest. Um, if you've been on um, on Bing, Yahoo, or, or Google, you notice when you start typing a, a search, it starts um, giving you a few ideas. Well, what we realize is this is a great way to expand keywords. So let's say your, your keyword was shoes. As you type, start typing shoes, yeah. Google's whole goal here is to display the search, the search term that the user wants to click. And they're not going to show low quality search terms. They're not going to show search terms that don't get clicked off. Them. They're going to show the top ones because it's the stuff that users are interested in. Um, the problem is you've only got five results there. Um, so I started to think about this when they first released it, and I was like, well, if I have a space and hit A, now I've got everything starting with A, and you can do this. You go through, start with A, B, C, D, and then if you see five results there, you can start with the next letter. So D, A, um, D, A, A, uh, and you can just kind of start typing. It doesn't always uh, show uh, kind of the right letters because it, it's, uh, it's taking into account like typos and stuff like that. But a great way to kind of start expanding your keywords. Um, the problem is it takes ages to do, and I'll show you how we ended up automating that. That's for the tool I showed you earlier. Um, but there's a few things you've got to think if you're doing this manually. We're on google.com.au at the moment. Um, so, for example, you see one of those results there is Shoes Australia. So it's personalizing our results based on the fact that we're on google.com.au. You'll also want to go to google.com. Um, you might notice that usually when you go to google.com, it automatically forwards you across to .com.au, but if you just go down to the bottom, it'll say, uh, uh, well, if we're on the Australian side, it'll go to, say, Google, go to google.com, and it'll actually uh, push you across to that site. So you'll notice that we actually get different results when we start typing here. Um, and you can do the same thing with Bing. Uh, Bing actually displays more results, and Ask, and Yahoo. And, and that's kind of how um, the reason I ended up writing kind of a keyword research thing is I wanted to kind of automate this whole thing and be able to go from you know not just typing A to Z but A A A A to Z Z Z Z Z, Z and get like every keyword I could out of Google um, and it's a lot of requests and it's a few hours of work to actually do it but I wanted to do it across all domain names and um, so that's what we actually uh, ended up doing and if you've used um, has anyone here just out of interest used Chrome SEO or SEO for Chrome? Few yeah. people. Yep. Yeah, it, um, you may not have, a heap of people don't actually notice this, but if you click on the tool, so um, Chrome SEO, as we've now called it, since we have to change the name for Google, sorry, SEO, SEO for Chrome, um, it is just an extension for the Google Chrome browser. So if you download the Google Chrome browser, and then you, uh, there's a thing where it asks you if you want to download extensions or go to the Google extensions thing, whatever they call it, you just Google it. To, pretty easy to find. Uh, and just Google SEO in the extension store will be the first result, the blue logo. And, and you, you'll get this tool installed, basically. And you just click the little blue icon, um, and by default, you display stats about the site that you're currently on. Um, but if you click on the Keyword tab, um, it opens up our, our new Keyword tool. And I'll show you the, the full one. We're, so we haven't actually released this yet. We have the basic one. Um, it's been out for years. but just the last few weeks when Kerry asked me to kind of talk, I was like, I don't want to teach people how to do keyword research, the manual way of going A, B, C, when I'm kind of using this tool, it makes it really easy. Um, so, so basically what we've got here is, um, I've typed in, um, I've come up with those base keywords that we talked about, um, and I've just clicked get keywords. Um, there's, I'll go over the rest of the settings later and where they come from, um, and what it's actually done is gone out and it's generated, what we got, 4,000, 880 keywords from uh, Google Suggest, Yahoo Suggest, Bing Suggest, and it's pulled them all in there. Um, and you can click down the bottom here and click export, it'll throw it out to a CSV file. But that's just automated that whole process of going through Yahoo, Bing, and everything and typing out those keywords. The other thing it's um, done is gone to uh, the Google AdWords keyword tool. Um, has everyone pretty much used the Google AdWords keyword tool? It's just mm. good to know what I'm... Mm. Yeah, you've all pretty much seen it. Um, so, I won't go too much into that. Has anyone never used it? Just be interested to know. Yeah, never used it. Um, most people use it, cool. So, um, 
we basically decided we're going to scrape all that data out and really just automate that whole process. Because, I mean, we spent a lot of time kind of generating these keyword lists. Um, and we've kind of got all that data, we're pulling it in. We're still working on kind of pulling a bit more of that information in. Um, the next few weeks, uh, we're going to be releasing this tomorrow. So it's not out just yet, but we'll be releasing it tomorrow. There's a few things I want to include that I thought would kind of be handy. Um, one is um, to do with a PPC. So um, Google displays the, uh, the average cost per click. So that's how much the, the average advertiser pays for um, the term nine. So the average person is paying 87 cents per click. But well, from that, we can actually work out if you put adverts on your site and rank that site for the word night, how much money you would make per click based on the percentage Google gives you um, if someone was to click on that ad. So now you can kind of say, well, um, here's a, this is good if you're doing kind of like made for AdSense sites um, and, and you're kind of writing content and, and not doing a lot of affiliate stuff. You're just kind of putting some ads on it. When you're a blog and you're you're putting ads on the thing. It's a great way to kind of know what keywords should I be targeting because it will give me a good return on investment. Uh, the other thing we're going to be doing is displaying, um, by default, obviously the Google AdWords keyword tool only displays Google stats, so it only displays the, the global searches for um, Google. We want to um, estimate the, the uh, average monthly searches uh, globally for all search engines and Bing and Yahoo, so you can actually go in and see, you know, where am I going to rank for this? If you can rank really easy for Yahoo, in Yahoo or Bing for whatever reason on your particular site, you can kind of look at that data and, and uh, kind of determine if it's still worth uh, ranking for. Um, a few things that are important to um, remember with this data, um, the Google AdWords keyword tool doesn't display um, the, it, the data isn't actually the monthly, the total monthly searches. It's the total monthly searches that have a um, commercial intent. So Google has determined, whatever, based on their factors, that the user who are actually making these searches wants to buy a product. Uh, I think that's really important to determine because if you've got a site that's a blog or something or a new site, this data is a little less relevant. Um, it's all you've got, so you may as well go on it, but um, there's potentially more hits out there that you could be getting. Um, what else have we got here? Is there anything in here that people kind of look at and go, what the hell does it do? One might be um, the match types over on the left hand side. That sometimes confuses people. Um, you're, and this all relates to Google AdWords. Um, if you're doing stuff in Google AdWords, they have a thing called exact match. So if we actually enable all of these, uh, and it'll automatically research for us, um, it'll display uh, a broad exact and phrase match. So you'll see for the word shoes here, we've got our exact match, which is in brackets. Um, an exact match means that just the word shoes was searched in Google. So a million people searched with just the word shoes. A phrase match, which is in the quotation marks, means that the word shoes was searched with other keyword terms around it, so maybe they searched for sexy <coughs> shoes. Um, and a phrase match, sorry, a, uh, a broad match, could actually be kind of anything. I mean, a, a related word to shoes might be footwear, so maybe they searched for footwear or something kind of related, and that's why that number's kind of a little bit more inflated, 55 million um, searches there. Um, so after we've looked at the Google keyword tool, um, I mean, we still haven't kind of determined what keywords do we want to use. Excuse um, me, Sean, yeah. can I just ask a question? I was doing a search on here a while ago using a quite a long time yep. keyword, and I was, it was coming up that there was yeah. 600,000 worldwide, and then I turned it on to exact, and it came down to something like 600. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. That just blew my mind. Yeah, so, 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 so is that the difference between broad and exact? But it's such a, a yeah, specific yeah. and long. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've got a question on that. I've, I've, I've probably got a question that will extend on that yep. um, question there. When you when you are using this keyword search tool and you you've got um, exact, broad, and whatever, um, which one are you preferring to use for for um, using it to put into your keyword? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, content. 
um, the research is side with you. Yeah, for sure. So it, it, uh, they all have their advantages. So the, the way that I look at it is... Um, and you have local and global as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what I, what I usually do is like I go, okay, so um, if, if, for example, I was able to rank for the word shoes, and that's a hard term to rank for, let's face it, okay? Mm. But if you were able to rank for that term shoes, um, potentially, uh, your direct traffic is a million results. So your first result for shoes, you'd potentially be getting a million clicks a month. But, um, I think if you could rank for shoes, how much easier would it be to rank for sexy shoes or cheap shoes? Once you've got that base keyword and you're ranking for it, it's really easy to rank for all those kind of more long tail keywords and start branching out. So if you can look at your, so I look at it two ways. I look at um, how many I would get if I could actually make it happen for that keyword, and then look at all the potential that it has if I could finally get there and then start branching down. So you look at the exact match first. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and then you go a little bit broader. And yeah. You see how many you can match within that broader range. Yeah, I, I, I then look at phrase and, and broad match. Right. Um, the, the reason I look at um, a, a broad match as well is if, even if you get the word shoes, it's really easy to then rank for like footwear and related terms. Mm -hmm. And I'll go, I'll go through that a bit later. It uh, relates to LSI and how Google's run, uh, ran that out in February in the Panda update. There's a few interesting things they did to try and solve a lot of this kind of over SEO crap that was happening. So it's a real headful, isn't it? I mean, yeah. You get halfway through it, and you can, like, from my point of view. I've been shown this several times when I do it, but you get halfway yeah. through it and you get bogged down and get in there, where was I? Yeah, yeah. I mean, our, our kind of goal for, um, for the, the SEO for Chrome tool is we want to we wanna simplify the interface a bit as much as we can, but still provide kind of like that Apple thing, you know, hide the things that aren't so important, but still make them kind of accessible. Um, but automate the task. Like, the cool thing with this is we can um, expand your keywords using that expansion method of uh, going to Google and Bing, and then we can throw them into the uh, Google AdWords keyword tool, and then we can get suggestions based on those keywords, re-expand them, and throw them back in. We can generate these giant lists of keywords, and, and let's face it, it's not how many you get, it's the kind of the relevance of them, but the more keywords, great, we can go through and filter through and see what we can do with these lists of keywords. It just kind of automates that whole task. Mm -hmm. um, did I kind of answer your question as well? Sorry. Mm -hmm. So it was oh, it was the difference between um, yeah, well, you were seeing the long just the, the long tail yeah. keyword that I had was how to sleep with sleep apnea. Six letters okay. seemed to be very very specific. Came up with something like six hundred, yes. six hundred thousand rather. Then when I changed it to exact, it's almost nothing. So broad was you were looking for you were doing a broad search. Yeah. And exact. So a broad search doesn't mean that it actually includes those terms. So it's it's searches that are related to those searches. And the reason for this is, let's say you put that that keyword into Google and the Google AdWords keyword tool. If you do a broad, Google wants to know that they can display your advert on any site that's kind of related because you can get the most impressions, they can make the most money out of you. It's yeah. like a, it, doing broad uh, things in Google AdWords is a, is a great way to get out there. Um, the problem is, does anyone do PPC AdWords stuff? It, it's really, yeah, people are doing it less and less because it, it's getting harder, you know? Um, the, the thing with, ad, if you haven't done it, AdWords, and I really recommend this, I've got it written later on, that you know, when you're doing all this keyword research and you're trying to determine what keywords you want to do, it could take you a few months to rank for a keyword, but within an hour you can pay for some PPC ads and have it up there. Be ranking in the number one spot and deciding, well, is there a return on investment on this keyword? Waste a hundred bucks ranking for a day or two and then go, no, there was no return on investment. Well, yeah, it's, it's making me money. Because otherwise you're gonna spend the next few months trying to rank for a keyword that's got no ROI. Um, so try it. Give it a shot. The, the funny thing about it is, is like you find yeah. somebody would be selling a brand product, yep. and they'd have AdWords on the side selling the opposition stuff right next to theirs. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it, yeah, it's it doesn't kind of look good. right to me. That doesn't make sense. But uh, people are, yeah, people are trying to sell They don't care as long as they make a dollar. Yeah, yeah, they, they don't really grasp the concept. But, um, but yeah, so um, the, the important thing is when you're doing PPC um, and, and you're putting these keywords in, um, 
try not to do broad matches because um, AdWords has this thing called quality score. Um, and your quality score uh, is, determines a number of things. It, determines, it basically determines how easy it is for you to rank um, up the list of ads. If your quality score is higher, you have to pay less to rank higher. So you might have an advert for shoes, and you might be paying a dollar, um, and you might be ranking in the first spot. I might be paying $10, and I might be ranking in the bottom spot. But because your quality score is better than mine, Google is happy to rank yours. Now, you got to think about it from Google's perspective, what makes a good quality score? They're making more money, which means more clicks on the ad, yeah. So um, when you're doing ads, the most important thing, if you just want to get the basics of it down, is your click-through rate. Make sure that your click-through rate remains high. Because remember, what you're really doing is making money for Google, and they want to write rank sites that are, are up there higher. So um, yeah, just keep that in mind when you're doing kind of your PPC thing. But it really is worth it. Like, if you want to spend a few months trying to rank for a keyword, put some AdWords in and just see how you go for it. Worst case scenario is you lose a bit of money doing it and don't have to spend a few months optimizing for it. Best case scenario, you keep running the ads and you keep ranking there while you're trying to get your organic listings. Sure, do they also take into account your bounce rate or they just don't care? Um, yeah, yeah, they do actually, for quality school. Yeah, they take, um, I don't know, I haven't done PPC for a while now. Um, I used to do a heap of PPC. But um, yeah, bounce rate. Um, the quality of the content on the page, similar to, I mean, your general ranking algorithms all count as well, the, the carry on from organic, but um, yeah, yeah. Sean, do you just want to explain the bounce rate? Um, yeah, so bounce rate is uh, basically, a, if a user clicked on the ad note, visited your site and just hit the back button straight away. I mean, to Google it kind of tells you them, you know, the user wasn't interested in the site, because if they would, they would have clicked the add to cart button or the done something else on the site. Um, keep this in mind because, I mean, you might be providing such good information that they get the information right there and wow, I'm happy, kick back. You know, it's, it's a hard one. Um, and, and remember that Google isn't perfect, they get this stuff wrong all the time. Um, so you might actually want to try and give an incentive to get the user to start going through your site, which is probably a good idea anyway. Um, Do you know what the cutoff, how long they have to be on the site before they can no, I don't. Um, I, I don't think. Well, but it, it's kind of. I, I'm sure what Google would do is um, maybe even measure it on a scale. So if they click within a second, it's really bad. If they stay there for a minute, maybe it's it's better. Yeah. I, I don't know. They might do something like that. It's it's hard to know. I think usually in those kind of circumstances, you can say, yeah, they probably do. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, if you do pay per click for your website, does that help to Put you up the rankings as well? Inorganic? Mm. No. No. Um, would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, no. no. Uh, so, um, the conspiracy theorists would say um, that it would do the opposite because if they start ranking you naturally, why would you pay for the ranks in PPC? But no, I can't imagine they'd do that because Google gets enough crap from the F or was it FTC or whatever it is over there. Um, yeah. Yeah, I can't imagine it would. Um, so um, from here, um, so, so you're looking at keywords, you're tr trying to determine you know, what's good. Obviously, just because a keyword gets a lot of searches doesn't mean you should be targeting it. Because as you know, long tail keywords are easier to rank for. But one of the important things to think about is kind of like long-term growth of the keyword. So if we look at something like men's shoes, um, Google has this button just here as you mouse over that goes off to their service insight for search. Um, and inside the search basically just kind of gives you some nice little graphs. It's similar to Google Trends, um, pretty much the same data and just a bit more kind of pulled out. Um, you can set uh, the period what you want to look over. So we'll look over since 2004 when they started collecting this data. And we can see men's shoes is, is pretty steady. You can see there's actually seasonal changes here. Um, which just happens to be that every wife buys their husband's shoes for Christmas. Um, by the looks of things. And, and you'll be surprised that when you see this, like search for bikini, when do you think bikini starts to go up? It happens with so many search terms. And this is great to keep in mind when you look at your search traffic and oh crap, my, my search traffic's dropping for that keyword. It might just be a seasonal thing, and it often is. Um, so keep that in mind. <coughs> yeah, generally, you want keywords that are going up, not going down. The cool thing about Insight is search is you can compare multiple keywords, just like the um, uh, Google Trends 
So we can go uh, men's shoes versus women, women's shoes. And that's interesting, right? Um, now, that could be a few things. Um, the 2008 was when a lot of people started becoming more comfortable putting their credit card details online. I don't know why it would go better for women's than men's. But, um, I mean, this, this does really... Women like to shop. Come on. <laughs> and their shoes. There we go. You see? Didn't, you didn't want to say it. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, that, that's probably right. Now, one of the cool things about this is uh, we're talking about property. If we, were, if we were selling shoes rather than writing a blog or some type of information site, um, one of the great things is we can actually uh, limit where we want this data to come from. So Google has Google Product Search. It's just been released in um, this year, I'm not sure when, was released in Australia. If you've got an e-commerce site, go and get listed on Google Product Search so you can kind of get those, because um, when people search for products, it, it lists the whole list of products out. And it's a great way to get sales. But um, the cool thing about this is actually limiting men's shoes and women's shoes for Google Product Search. Because now we know that these users were really interested in shoes and buying them. They weren't just like looking for like the latest trends or kind of you know, casual shoe lovers or something. These guys actually wanted to buy right then, and that is really weird. Um, so I don't know what happened at the end of 2010, but it wasn't a good time for shoes. Um, and, and going on from there, um, one of the hard things with, uh, with any site is kind of keeping up with the trends. Like, what's new? For, um, for shoes, or uh, if, you, if you're trying to source stock even. Um, so if we go the last 90 days, we can do a search, pull down to the bottom of the page, and it's actually going to show us the rising search trends. Um, so I don't know, maybe Merrill Shoes is a brand. Um, obviously Louis Vuitton's doing really well right now. Um, but this is over the last 90 days, these uh, Sorry, I'm kind of in the way, aren't I? Um, these keywords are kind of doing the best and they're, they're making some traction. Um, and that could be a long-term trend that you want to jump on now before it kind of uh, goes crazy. Um, it must be raining a lot in the United States. Is that oh, for the, <laughs> Okay, the reason for this is uh, Google Insights search product doesn't show Australian data yet, unfortunately, because the product was originally only United States and uh, parts of Europe, I think. If we go... Up here, yeah, so we've got Germany, United Kingdom, and the United States. So unfortunately, this data isn't localized to us. Um, but it's, yeah, it's kind of like it's the best we've got to go on. Um, also, keep in mind these numbers at the side here. Um, Google doesn't uh, doesn't display the actual. It's based on a percentage scale, basically. They're not actually showing the search trends. We've got some ideas about how we could maybe correlate um, this data with current stats that Google's giving us to work out over the past how much exact search data has been coming in, which could be really good for kind of analyzing what keywords we could be using, but we're gonna have to play around with that and see what we can achieve. Um, anything else anyone seeing here? They're, they're wondering what they can do with it. Um, there's other stuff up the top here, like, uh, lo uh, like location. So this is more if you were just wondering what searches are popular in a certain location or something like that. And Sean, these are all available through Google Webmaster Tools. Um, I, don't think, I don't know if they're linked to from Webmaster Tools, but if you've done a search in the um, Google AdWords keyword tool, the easiest way is each keyword's got a little link over the side. If you do happen to start using our tool, you can actually click multiple ones and just click compare. And it just kind of pops up a thing. Uh, comparing those two keywords. Um, the, the, uh, the news thing is kind of cool as well, seeing what news is influencing it. I usually just hide it. But it's you've got to sort of put in parameters in there where you can... By that I mean, like, for instance, mm -hmm. if there's 100,000 uh, on a global search, yeah. and another word says, oh, they've only got 20,000, that might be your best bet. Because 100,000 is highly competed for. Uh, you, so there might be so many sites competing for the hundred thousand. Yeah. You know, yeah. So um, whereas the one that's twenty thousand, it might only be like a few sites. Yeah, you're right. So, so it's easier to beat them. Yeah. And that's very, that's very hard to understand. Yeah. In things like this, in market summary. Like yeah. You look at it and you think, it's true. yeah, for sure. So um, yeah, and that's the most important point is like all of these keywords, they can be getting as many hits as you want, but if you can't rank for the thing, there's no point kind of 
you're not going for it. Um, or, or taking a more long-term view at that keyword would be kind of the smarter thing. But um, one of the things that uh, we've, we've been playing around with is um, determining how hard a keyword is to rank for. Um, and and we, we're thinking about um, how we could integrate this for free into the tool. Um, because I think Mark Samurai does something similar, doesn't it? Um, what does Mark Samurai base the competitiveness on? Does anyone know? Because I, I, I think it's a table with different measures of how many sites there are for a keyword. It's the number and, of sites ranking for it. Yeah, and then yeah. if you click on a, a keyword, you, you will, it also lists um, like the top 10 sites yeah. and with measures of how strong those sites are, things like what, what's their page rank, how many yeah. backlinks do they have, how yeah. many pages are indexed on the site. Those kind of cool, things. Cool. So it looks, at, looks yeah. at the number of competition and, and the strength of the top 10 competition. Yeah, yeah. Because when I used it, like when they first released Mark Samurai, it didn't have any of that kind of page rank information and backlinks and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was just the number of kind of uh, sites ranking for the keyword. And I was like, that's a little useless. But, mm -hmm. but that's good that they're doing the kind of whole thing. So that's pretty much what we're, we're trying to implement is um, having a, a basically a column um, in the tool, and it would be it would be really great just having a column you can order on and it will say kind of an overall competitiveness of that keyword. So yeah. we'll basically take the top 10 or 100 results, determine how well they're doing on a number of factors, like we might take into account Moz rank, um, which is SEO Moz's kind of way of ranking things, um, page rank, I guess. You can um, have your own proprietary algorithm that does that. And that makes that's you a little bit more unique too, doesn't it? Yeah, well, we're, we're, gonna, we're more open and free, but um, yeah, mm -hmm. pretty much. Um, wouldn't you sell it and make some money? Um, I own 100,000 users. Wow, yeah, um, 50 like cents if, each if, like. Yeah, I mean, it'd be great if I had $100,000, but you think even if I put a dollar on it, no one would have, not 100,000 users would have bought it. No. Um, so for me, having 100,000 users um, that I can promote stuff to, that I can yeah. rally around the community, is huge. Yeah. Um, like anything I release now, you know, it's great, yeah. So um, I come from an open source background as well, so the whole thing yeah. stuff is kind of nice. Um, makes me sleep well. <laughs> um, but no, it is. Um, yeah, the, the whole thing with uh, it's an interesting thing because everyone's like, you've got to sell stuff on this, and we will. We are we thinking about premium things we will, want to provide. But my big thing for business models is um, if I can make you money, um, I can charge you for that. And if I can prove to you that I'm making you money then fine. It's very easy to use a tool that I'm not going to use it for the next few months. But if on a constant basis I can make you money out of your sites, I can charge for that. And that's that's a lot of the stuff we're going to be uh, doing. We actually, um, if you do have a blog or a social site or forums, have a chat to me later. We put a new product we're going to be releasing, um, which is actually free, but it benefits us both. Um, and you might be interested in that. It's a monetization tool that will hopefully make you some more money. So we're doing that over the next few months. It'll be coming out kind of public beta. But private beta for the time being, if you're interested. Um, anything else? Anyone's wondering? Queries? Comments? Side remarks? Funny jokes? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Funny joke or side remark? No. <laughs> yeah. uh, insights for search. Yeah. Um, you can only pull up two word keywords at a time with that. <laughs> so, oh, you can, can you? Yeah. Okay. Um, it still would be a little bit Time consuming to use it. How, how and yeah, when sure. would you use it so, to, to yeah, use it in a time effective way? So I use this at the point where I'm like, you know what, I, I probably want to target this keyword. Because um, it's at that point where you're like, well, is the keyword <laughs> dropping off? Yeah. And that's really it. It's like, is this keyword really dropping off and I should kind of forget about it? Mm -hmm. um, there is uh, another thing in um, the Google AdWords tool, which is these uh, local search. Uh, Graph here. The problem is, I don't know why Google does this, they only display local trends as a graph, they don't display global trends, which seems a bit odd to me. Um, we're actually thinking about doing a global one, so um, hopefully to answer your question in the future, um, we'll actually have a, a global trends column here, which will just be able to scroll down and see a bit of a graph to quickly uh, overview that. It's kind of a, a goal we'd like to have. Um, so, anything else on that one? 
because I want to get technical. <laughs> yeah. oh, I've got a question. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of how accurate do you think the results are that they give, both yeah. monthly and local? Because what yeah, I found yeah. is I've got, I targeted a keyword, I got really excited because I'm seeing I'm number yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, you're getting like, well, I'm not getting the 4,800. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. It's, so it's a hard one. Um, there's, there's a, I guess there's a few factors. Um, one is, um, they, it, it says in the tool that they're estimates. Now, I have a feeling that the way Google actually estimates this is uh, uh, they're probably only calculating the results over one data center. So they take one of their data centers because they like heat to them. Um, I think it was estimates of Google having like a million servers or something. I don't know what the truth <coughs> is. Um, but taking a data center, um, and they probably estimate kind of the searches coming to that and then say how many data centers do we have and what's the average traffic and work out that way, which makes me think that this data could be pretty it's inaccurate. It's the dark board. Yeah, they have 4,800. Yeah. 290 is the favorite number as well. Oh, really? Nice. I'll keep that. It's a good one. Yeah, it's, yeah, it could be. It, it's funny, like, it could be completely inaccurate, but it's all we've got. <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah. There is, um, there is another tool for keyword data, which is uh, Bing's one. I don't forget the name of it. Um, uh, Bing has a tool, uh, Microsoft Advertising Intelligence. Um, the problem with it is you've got to plug it into Microsoft Excel, which, if you're on a Mac, could be a problem um, if you don't have Office. But, um, yeah, so, so check that out as well and then kind of compare the, the data and see what you think. Um, but yeah, as I said, it's kind of all we've got. So uh, the the AdWords thing's interesting though, because like if you're if you're looking at this data and you're thinking about ranking for it, once again, like if you don't know if it's accurate, throw an adverts thing, an AdWords uh, ad up there and just see if things start uh, driving traffic. I mean, you're gonna waste a bit of money doing it, but it, it might be a way. The other thing is like. Um, I mean, if you get no traffic, obviously it's not going to be a click-through rate issue. One thing I've seen people do before is optimize for this great keyword and there's all this traffic and they're not getting no clicks, but like their title tag is really crappy. Um, and keep in mind that when you're trying to spam as many keywords as you can into your title tag, people actually have to click on it. Um, so you want to make the thing kind of interesting and about the topic they're searching for. Uh, yeah, so don't spam it too bad. Um, Okay, was there another hand? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I had a question. Um, you know, you're talking about keywords and putting your meta tags, right? Yeah. And through your content on your site. Uh, meta tags, do you mean like the keyword meta tag? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, none of the major search engines actually really look at the keyword meta tag anymore. Um, Mac Cups from Google's come out and publicly said that Google doesn't look at it. Um, and it's presumed Bing and Yahoo don't either. Um, the interesting thing about the um, keyword meta tag is I use it to look at all my competition sites and see what search terms they're targeting. Yeah, that's um, and we're writing something to do that as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll just automatically pull out all the search terms. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's I, I don't even bother with it anymore. Your description tag, go for it just in case it, start, it gets used. Um, description tags will usually only be used for your homepage when someone is searching for the brand name of your site. Um, if they're searching for a term that's kind of included in the site, usually Google finds that snippet of text and displays it and holds the keywords. Yeah. Um, but usually if they're searching the brand, it might display the description tag. It's less and less. So key keywords, say you wanted to target stuff locally. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of businesses might have, um, we service these areas and they, and they have a whole list of the towns where they operate yeah. from, and they're trying to attach those to them, their base keyword. Yes. Yeah. Does that work? Um, and, and how do you yeah. get away with it without getting Google offside? Okay. So, um, so for example, if you were shoes, you might want uh, you might Sunshine Co shoes, Brisbane shoes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I mean, this is this is an interesting one because um, it kind of gets into um, how do you petition kind of your keywords, and I've got a bit I want to talk about later, kind of like grouping keywords, but let's cover it now. Um, because, um, and, and this is kind of changed with the Panda update, because um, if you want to do Brisbane shoes and Sunshine Coast shoes, there's, there's a few ways you can go about it. You can either have um, a separate page for each one. Now, if you have a store in each of those locations, 
definitely go a separate page for each one because there's a great chance they're going to rank those and put them through on local search and stuff like that. Um, but if you're just trying to get like the entirety of Australia, you know, it, it's a hard one to kind of pull. Um, for, because local is now so competitive, if, if you were doing local, I'd, I'd say you'd probably still go individual pages and try and rank them. Put them on the same page, you could, it depends kind of your keyword. Like if it was shoes, it's going to be really hard to, um, to put Brisbane shoes and Sunshine Coast shoes and Sydney shoes on the same page and rank it for all those terms. Okay. But if it was um, uh, sexy shoes with red soles, if you were targeting like Louis Vuittons, um, then yeah, you could you could easily get sexy shoes, uh, red soles, Brisbane, Sydney. Okay. So it depends how it really depends on the keyword, how competitive it is, and stuff like that. And it is a hard it's a hard one to teach because it's one of those things I look at and I kind of really look into it and decide. But yeah, based it on kind of how hard that keyword is. So on a local level, where you had maybe it was window cleaning, you had yeah. um, you know, Nursa, Cool, and Flounder, and everywhere else. But you're really based in one location. If you had individual pages for each of those, you're really going to, can you duplicate the content and just put I, a separate No, page? I wouldn't no. duplicate the content, because um, when, let's say a user searches for one of the terms on, uh, on one of those pages, Google's then going to, isn't going to want to rank the same content on the same page, yeah. so they're going to filter all that data down, mm -hmm. and, and that whole filtering process uh, becomes a problem. Um, duplicate content penalties isn't an issue search across uh, so, the whole penalty thing is hard because is there a duplicate content penalty? Well, if you have multiple pages with the same content, they're not going to rank. But no, Google doesn't say, oh, you've got all duplicate content on, on these pages here, we're going to stop ranking you. No, that doesn't happen because that's kind of how people do category pages and stuff like that, so that's fine. Um, so, so don't <coughs> freak out about that. But, you want to keep your duplicate content to a minimum. I think that's the most important thing. Um, it, it's pretty easy to kind of think about spinning that up a bit. And I don't mean using this content spinner, but um, you know, just type a, a few things about the area. Um, you can you can actually get a little bit sentimental about the area that you're doing it in and the clients around the area and stuff, and try and create a bit of new like content. Project, yeah. And yeah, yeah, do something like that. We've we've. Uh, I don't do kind of client work anymore, but when I was, we had, a, we had a heap of sites that were ranking for kind of all the Sunshine Coast areas for their keyword term, all separate pages. Yeah. Um, but, but the reason I say about like uh, kind of petitioning the keywords, can I grab a drink? Actually, it's just water or something. Um, so, yeah, um, we, we're, we're going to get technical for a, a second. Um, uh, and this, kind of, this relates to that. We're going to talk about um, latent semantic indexing, or LSI. Oh, so um, I'll read the Wikipedia description because it makes me sound intelligent. Um, latent semantic indexing is an indexing and retrieval method that uses a mathematical technique called singular value decomposition to identify patterns in relationships between the terms and concepts contained in an unstructured collection of text. What that basically means is, um, and and there's talk about, you know, uh, is it actually LSI which Google's using? What we do know is, as of February, when Google uh, ran out the, the Panda Pharma kind of thing, um, one of the things that kind of started happening is a lot of people say, oh, we're, we're losing rankings. And, and, um, uh, and it's kind of like, well, are you losing rankings or is everyone else gaining rankings? Right? Because this whole LSI thing actually seemed like other people were gaining rankings, not people losing rankings. And what it was was, um, let's say you had, uh, let's say it was shoes, and, and you'd gone out, actually a better example would be Sunshine Coast SEO, right? I'm sure some of you tried to target that. So let's say you've gone out and got heaps of links for Sunshine Coast SEO, and you're pointing them all back into your site. Um, but the thing we all used to do is go out to as many sites as we could, get all these Sunshine Coast SEO links, point them in. Um, and our, our content would be optimized for Sunshine Coast SEO, and uh, you know you'd only you wouldn't spam the, the word over the site. You only click once or twice, um, which is fine. Um, but what Google started to do is this whole concept of LSI, which is determining the content of a page when the keyword might not really be listed. So looking at the overall content of a page and saying what's it all kind of about based on the keywords around it. So a site about Sunshine Coast SEO. 
um, would have terms like internet marketing, sunshine coast. Um, <coughs> uh, you might have um, s social media training, sunshine coast. You have all those kind of marketing related terms pointing back to your site. And a lot of sites appear to be losing these rankings because their link profiles were just too narrow. Um, and we're kind of seeing that with um, page content as well. So when you're going out and, and choosing your page content, don't make it too narrow. Like think about other concepts that could actually go on the page that will um, cause you to rank this stuff. And when you're going out and getting links, get links around the, con uh, around the general concept. So a few ways to actually kind of determine kind of what these uh, terms are. So let's say it was um, uh, SEO Sunshine Coast. We could uh, go to a, a synonym site that's going to list us a few synonyms for the word SEO or search engine optimization, find a few related terms. But the other thing you can do is uh, if you do a Google search, um, we'll actually do shoes, we'll get back to our shoe site, and you put a tilde character. So this is a tilde character before the word shoes. Um, the tilde is the little squiggly line. Yeah. Um, that's actually telling Google to uh, give you uh, a search result related to the term shoes. Now if you scroll down, the cool thing here is they're actually showing semantically kind of related terms. So you'll notice the things that are highlighted here, we have boots, we have footwear shoes, uh, shoes and footwear, what else we got? Sneakers. So you'll see all these terms that Google kind of considers related to your base keyword. Um, so that's a good way to kind of determine what, um, what other keywords you should be targeting. <laughs> so, so Sean, what you're saying is that yeah. text anchors with inbound links for your site should be very natural. They should, do, they, they should mm. look as if they'd been developed organically yeah, by yeah. other people who are excited yeah, about your site. Yeah, for sure. Does that make I mean, sense? It's, yeah, yeah, basically, I mean, we, we've kind of got to remember that um, Google doesn't really like SEOs. And, and the reason is, is we make it hard for Google. Like, if SEOs didn't exist, uh, Google wouldn't have to worry so much about their algorithms. They could just sit what they were doing in 1998, where they were just scraping all the backlinks, determining how many links were coming in. And it was all great, because it was all natural. And it was just, I made a link to your site, so I loved your site. So Google decided to kind of promote that. Now with us going out and kind of creating all these because we talk about like link building, and it's usually talking about us going out and manually creating links. Um, and really, you've got to think, does Google really like that? Well, no. It's not that they're saying, no, don't do it. It's just that it actually manipulates the search results. Yeah. If they were natural, it would actually be easier to go for Google. Now, I don't know, is Google penalizing sites because they get only s links from Sunshine Coast SEO or something like that? I don't think they're penalizing. And it's the, back to the same thing. I actually think it's they're giving value to the other sites and have more dynamic mm -hmm. things. Because it's it, it's hard for Google to penalise someone because, um, like, if I was competing with you, you know, what would I do? I'd go out and give you all these links for the same term um, and, and, and get your site penalised. And, look, we have seen things like that happen in the past where people figured out loopholes and were able to penalise sites. Um, but I think Google's wise up and, and doesn't do that anymore. So, um, yeah, yeah. I think that's the, the general gist of it. Yeah, yeah, just quickly, I read a thing recently, it was a case study done on keyword variation like that, and a guy, I think his keyword yeah. was orange mega sweets or something, and he made blue sweets, blue mega sweets, red mega, it was three unrelated things. Yeah. And he did the exact match keyword, and he built all his links for one on exact match, one on keyword variations, and one on completely irrelevant crap, and the anchor text variation won by, they ended up as like position one, five, and eight or something. And, oh, so uh, different sites. Yeah, nice, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah like it went one. variation, yeah. exact match, unrelated. That nice, so that's kind of proves yeah. the, yeah, the proof the point. Cool. I love doing um, kind of more scientific SEO stuff where you take a few domain names <coughs> that have never been optimized and kind of do this stuff. Because I think it, it's hard to get take out all other variables, that's the hardest thing. But it, you get some interesting results. Uh, SEO loss is a good site if you want to kind of look at some of that data. They do a lot of research. They've got the money and time to do that, I think. So.
just on the duplicate content thing and relating to SEO models, on our um, Facebook group, I put a link today, I think it was today, about um, a post that SEO models did on um, duplicate content. Yeah. Um, it's huge, I'm only a quarter yeah. of the way through yeah. it. Yeah. It's, it's like that, isn't it? It's massive, it's like that. but it's so worthwhile, yeah. but I'll put it on the meetup yeah. site as well, so cool, it's cool. worth doing. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah no, that stuff's really yeah. worth um, reading. They've got a lot of cool tools as well. Good. Um, yeah, so um, I guess you know we kind of get into that whole thing of like grouping keywords. Um, Sean, sure, so, just, a, just a, yeah. ask a quick question while you're working on that. Yeah. yeah. Um, should should you? This is probably going back into the construction of the meta tags and description and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Sure. Is there a is there a limit to how many keywords you should put in all that back end stuff? So, in, in like your description. Yeah. Um, so the general rule about. Uh, Kind of on-site optimization is um, if, if the keyword is mentioned once or twice in the content copy, you're kind of good there. If you can get the thing in the title, great. If you can get the thing in the in the URL, great. Because those things generally, you know, so the, the great thing about having it in the title is, um, d despite the fact that Google tends to rank those better, is when the user's searching for something and they see the search engine result page, um, they're more likely to click on something mm -hmm. that has their keyword there. So that's the great thing about having the title. Now the other thing is, the great thing about having it in the domain is, um, I don't know if you noticed this change, but it happened, it's happened in the last few months. They moved the URL from the bottom of the result to the top. Yeah. So if you now have that keyword in the domain name, it's bolding it uh, right at the top. So that's another way you can, once again, kind of push that keyword out to users. Um, kind of unrelated, but I should probably uh, mention it anyway. The, the length of your URL is important because um, if you, the URL is too long, they're going to put uh, an ellipsis, a dot, 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 and, and kind of cut out some of your URL. Um, and this is my argument for www versus non-www, which is the argument of should I have www before my name or not. I say don't have it because it gives you an extra four characters to fit in keywords. I know it's not a lot, but it could be just what it takes, you know? Yeah. Um, you may as well. I mean, there's no... There's no advantage to putting www before you domain that. Um, so, yeah. But you will be able to change your, for those who don't know, you will change your settings in your hosting to enable that to happen. Yeah, yeah, you do. Yeah, it won't just happen magically. No, no. It would be nice if it did, wouldn't it? Um, there, there is one way you can uh, do it, um, is uh, in uh, the Google Webmaster Tools. Yeah. You can change in there what they display in the search result, but you'd be best uh, changing it overall. If you want to do it, it can be complicated depending on your host. Um, uh, Google 301 redirects. Um, yeah, a www 301 redirect maybe. Oh, in WordPress. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, if, does this, does it, is there a WordPress plugin that does it? Yes, there is. I don't know the name of it. Um, but the best way is, and I was just installed a new blog for someone else the other yeah. day and I just installed it straight out without the W's. Yeah. Um, and it'll just it, it just 301 redirect will redirect anyone who types it in automatically. Uh, but there is a plugin that does do it. Okay. Yeah. For for anyone techie, um, if you are doing 301 redirects and you're using um, uh, a virtual what is it? Virtual host whatever, um, you wanna put you'd be best off putting the 301 redirect in your vhost config file, not in your .ht access file, because the vhost config file is loaded when Apache boots, whereas the .ht access file is accessed every time someone hits the page. So it's just going to be faster if you put it in your vhost. And if you didn't understand that, don't worry. <laughs> 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 um, uh, yeah, so grouping, grouping keywords, because this is a thing. like. You basically know how to go out and get these ridiculous number of keywords, and that's what we kind of do, get, getting all these keywords in. But then it's really like, what the heck do I use? And, and we've talked about like the number of uh, the number of, of search results for it. So, uh, sorry, the number of searches a month. Nice, but if you can't rank for the thing, you know, and, and you kind of want to go through. Um, one thing you can do is, is go through. For example, if it was shoes, you, you'd go to Boots. Dot com if they were one of your competitors and um, use a tool you can use mine or there's uh, uh, 
the SEO SEO book tool, it, or the SEO book toolbar for uh, Firefox, uh, SEO Quake, or that's messy. Yeah, I use really. SEO Quake, and yeah, yeah. yeah it's a I, so the, they one of the things they do do is they display the stats in the search results. Yeah, they do. Um, one yeah, of the, the thing, the so one of the things that I've uh, decided I'm going to do instead of that is making it so you can actually have a button over here when you mouse over, click a link, it will display the search results for that keyword, and you can just do it there. Because that way you much not, neater. Yeah, then you haven't got to crack the search results. I'll, I'll change over yours. That's the thing, it's like, because this is all stuff that, you know, we, we use all these tools that we have in the past, and it's just like, I want to write stuff that's better, you know, yeah. and I can, and I can give it away for free, and, and you know, yeah. um, so that, that's kind of what we're trying to do. Um, so, uh, yeah, so you, you can basically uh, use one of these tools and, and find out, um, you know, how competitive is this page? So if you, whoa. Oh, I accidentally clicked, sir. Mm -hmm. So if you um, no, I'm not using that. Um, so you can see things here. Um, I mean, okay, have a, a quick glance at the Google Page Rank and make it quick, okay? Because we just don't know about the Google Page Rank. It's something you can look at, but uh, the value of it is 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 questionable. But then again, all of this is very questionable. If we have a look at backlink stats here. Um, do you place any value on the Alexa page, right? Sir, uh, of the Alexa.